April 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapters 20 and 21 from the Old Testament. The Lord instructed Joshua, Have the Israelites select the cities of refuge that I told you about through Moses. Anyone who accidentally kills someone can escape there. These cities will be a place of asylum from the avenger of blood. The one who committed manslaughter should escape to one of these cities, stand at the entrance of the city gate, and present his case to the leaders of that city. They should then bring him into the city, give him a place to stay, and let him live there. When the avenger of blood comes after him, they must not hand over to him the one who committed manslaughter, for he accidentally killed his fellow man without premeditation. He must remain in that city until his case is decided by the assembly and the high priest dies. Then the one who committed manslaughter may return home to the city from which he escaped. So they selected Kadesh in Galilee in the hill country of Naphtali, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah. Beyond the Jordan east of Jericho, they selected Bezer in the desert on the plain belonging to the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead belonging to the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Bashan belonging to the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities of refuge appointed for all the Israelites and for resident foreigners living among them. Anyone who accidentally killed someone could escape there and not be executed by the avenger of blood, at least until his case was reviewed by the assembly. The tribal leaders of the Levites went before Eleazar the priest and Joshua, son of Nun, and the Israelite tribal leaders in Shiloh in the land of Canaan and said, The Lord told Moses to assign us cities in which to live, along with the grazing areas for our cattle. So the Israelites assigned these cities and their grazing areas to the Levites from their own holdings as the Lord had instructed. The first lot belonged to the Kohathite clans. The Levites, who were descendants of Aaron the priest, were allotted thirteen cities from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. The rest of Kohath's descendants were allotted ten cities from the clans of the tribe of Ephraim and from the tribe of Dan and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Gershon's descendants were allotted thirteen cities from the clans of the tribe of Issachar and from the tribes of Asher and Naphtali and the half-tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. Mirai's descendants by their clans were allotted twelve cities from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the Israelites assigned to the Levites by lot these cities and their grazing areas, as the Lord had instructed Moses. They assigned from the tribes of Judah and Simeon the cities listed below. They were assigned to the Kohathite clans of the Levites, who were descendants of Aaron, for the first lot belonged to them. They assigned them Kiriath Arba. Arba was the father of Anak, that is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah, along with its surrounding grazing areas. Now the city's fields and surrounding towns they had assigned to Caleb, son of Jephaniah, as his property. So to the descendants of Aaron, the priest, they assigned Hebron, a city of refuge for one who committed manslaughter, Libna, Jatir, Eshtemoa, Holon, Debur, Ain, Jatta, and Beth Shemesh, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of nine cities taken from these two tribes. From the tribe of Benjamin, they assigned Gibeon, Geba, Anathoth, and Almon, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. The priests descended from Aaron received thirteen cities and their grazing areas. The rest of the Kohathite clans of the Levites were allotted cities from the tribe of Ephraim. They assigned them Shechem, a city of refuge for one who committed manslaughter, in the hill country of Ephraim, Gezer, Kibzaim, and Beth Haran, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. From the tribe of Dan, they assigned Eltekah, Gibbethon, 
Ajalon, and Gathramon, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, they assigned Tanak and Gathrimmon, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of two cities. The rest of the Kohathite clans received ten cities and their grazing areas. They assigned to the Gershonite clans of the Levites the following cities. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, Golan and Bashan, a city of refuge for one who committed manslaughter, and Bish Terah along with the grazing areas of each, a total of two cities. From the tribes of Issachar, Kishon and Dabarath, Jarmuth and Enganim, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. From the tribe of Asher, Mishal, Abdon, Helkath, and Rehob, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. From the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh and Galilee, a city of refuge for one who committed manslaughter, Hamath Dor, and Kartan, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of three cities. The Gershonite clans received 13 cities in their grazing areas. They assigned to the Mirarite clans, the remaining Levites, the following cities from the tribe of Zebulun, Jachneum, Karta, Dimna, and Nahala, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. From the tribe of Reuben, Bezer, Jahaz, Kedemoth, and Mephoth, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. From the tribe of Gad, Ramoth, and Gilead, a city of refuge for one who committed manslaughter, Mahanam, Heshbon, and Jazer, along with the grazing areas of each, a total of four cities. The Merarite clans, the remaining Levites, were allotted twelve cities. The Levites received within the land owned by the Israelites forty-eight cities in all, and their grazing areas. Each of these cities had grazing areas around it. They were alike in this regard. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had solemnly promised to their ancestors, and they conquered it and lived in it. The Lord made them secure in fulfillment of all he had solemnly promised their ancestors. None of their enemies could resist them. Not one of the Lord's faithful promises to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everyone was realized. God, I was reading uh, about uh, these chapters in one of the commentaries I have, and they said that in the original Hebrew, in these last couple sentences uh, of chapter 21, that the word all appears six times. And I love that. I love thinking of you as all, as the God of my all. Not only did you fulfill all of your promises to Israel, all, not some, not 99%, but you're also my God of all. You are everything to me. Uh, the reason that I made it through another day is because of you and how you made uh, the body I inhabit. Um, how I interacted with this world today and the beautiful sunset I saw, that was all you, all you. The relationships formed and the relationships that grew today, that was all you. The business, the business that came in, the money that went into uh, my business account, that was all you. The joy that happened throughout my day, that was all you. And even some of the frustration I know was all you. I see it as frustrating. You see it as this had to happen because this had to happen. <laughs> Everything is all you. Today, I just want to take a moment and thank you for being the God of my all. That you don't give us 50% or you don't give us 75%, uh, which even 75% in an uh, earthly relationship would be kind of crazy awesome. But we don't have an earthly or worldly relationship with you, God. You are the God of all. You are the God of not 99%, but 100% in so many ways that we don't even see. 
Thank you for being the God of my all, the God of my everything. All praise goes to you, my God. In your son's name I pray, amen.